I'm Marty Stauber. Olympic National Park in Washington State is divided into a mountain portion and a coastal portion. From the beach, the glaciers on Mount Olympus are only 30 miles away. That short distance spans more life zones than any other area in North America. It contains a remarkable variety of wildlife and our only temperate rainforest. This is the wettest place in the continental United States. We'll explore this rainforest, and then we'll climb into the rugged peaks, whose height controls this dramatic weather, as we begin an Olympic odyssey. When nature crafted the Olympic Peninsula, it fashioned one of the most diverse, dramatic, and unique landscapes in North America. Summits over 7,000 feet high are home to families of Rocky Mountain goats. Olympic marmots are native only to the peninsula, and regal Olympic elk are found here and nowhere else. Beautiful black-tailed deer roam the old growth forest. Along the wilderness coast, crabs scour the rocks for food. Some of the heaviest surf on the continent bombards the shore, eroding the coastal headlands and slowly isolating them from the land. Within this turbulent world of rocks and water, is a wondrous variety of marine life, like the sea star, more commonly known as a starfish. Iridescent green sea anemones thrive in the coastal tide pools. The soft, shell-less hermit crab carries around a borrowed snail shell as it searches for food. One square foot of rich tide pool habitat, like that along the wild Olympic coastline, can support 4,000 individual animals. Offshore waters teem with life as well. Whales, sea lions, and seals favor the Olympic Peninsula. Beyond the thunderous crashing of waves toward the interior of Olympic National Park lies another world, a quiet forest of soaring trees and abundant mosses and ferns.
Sound is absorbed by a canopy of maples and conifers covered by moisture-loving plants. Hikers in this cathedral-like setting are likely to see species of plants and animals native only to the Olympic Peninsula. In the last ice age, glaciers isolated the region and organisms either adapted, like the Olympic chipmunk, or migrated, like many of the birds and the Sitka black-tailed deer. Some animals died out. Perhaps this is why grizzly bears, mountain sheep, wolverines, and others are absent from the Olympics. One species that migrated and returned is the Olympic elk, a subspecies of the Roosevelt elk. Many cow elk give birth in the dense cover of the rainforest. Newborns are hidden everywhere, camouflaged in soft blankets of green. Elk calves are usually born in late May and early June. For the first few weeks of their lives, they are totally reliant on their mothers and the dense cover of the forest. Spring finds baby animals, like this blue grouse chick, scattered throughout the woods. Even the tiniest of feathered creatures take advantage of this peaceful kingdom of ancient giants. A rufous hummingbird nest blends into the moss-draped limbs. The rainforest of Olympic National Park is sustained by a mind-boggling abundance of moisture. 12 feet of rain per year. Ponds and streams are constantly replenished by both rainfall and snow runoff. They provide freshwater havens for animals like these hooded mergansers. During spring courtship, the male merganser erects his fan-shaped crest and utters a guttural, frog-like croak that can be heard a half mile away. Nearby, a common snipe uses its long, straight bill to probe for worms and insects. Solitary and secretive, the snipe is rarely seen unless flushed. Other woodland inhabitants are less active in their pursuit of prey. The western toad is not so much looking for a meal as it is waiting for one. Because the west side of the Olympic mountains are unusually moist, the normally nocturnal banana slug ventures forth in the daytime, breathing through a spherical hole in its side. Oddly enough, its bright yellow color is a form of protection. Blending in with decaying yellow leaves on the forest floor, the slug is often overlooked by predators. But this western garter snake is not to be fooled. When young and small, the slug is a favorite food of snakes. If this young slug had been allowed to grow to its full size, chances are it would have become too large and too distasteful for the snake. In adulthood, the banana slug may grow to nearly one foot and exude so much slimy mucus 
that it is repulsive to even the hungriest predator. So famous are the Olympic slugs that slug souvenirs, including slug cookbooks, are available at local stores. Recipes include such unappetizing entrees as slug stew and slug casserole. Slugs are simply snails without shells, a distinct disadvantage for the slug in this particular instance. One of the most elusive of forest dwellers is the Aplodontia, commonly referred to as the mountain beaver. It does live in mountain forests, and it is an excellent swimmer, but that's where the similarity with a beaver ends. The much smaller mountain beaver usually forages at night to avoid predators like this watchful red-tailed hawk. But occasionally, it is seen during the day. Mysterious and reclusive, large numbers of mountain beaver may occupy an area, yet be totally unseen by humans. The mountain beaver has a varied diet of conifers, grasses, shrubs, and vines, but it prefers ferns. The mountain beaver is found only in the Pacific Northwest, where it has ready access to large amounts of highly succulent vegetation. The moisture contained in the plants is absolutely necessary for its well-being. The foot-long herbivore has a primitive kidney structure that makes it inefficient at conserving water within its own body. The mountain beaver is not gregarious. On the contrary, an unfamiliar face in its network of tunnels is definitely unwelcome. Whichever one gives ground could risk exposure to the waiting hawk. Movement in the stream catches the eye of the still hungry red tail. It glides down to investigate. The hawk apparently realizes it is no match for a sociable river otter. One of the most joyful of creatures, the river otter is an aquatic acrobat, effortlessly slicing through the cool, clear waters of the Olympic Peninsula. For the foiled red tail, a drink of water will have to do for now. Olympic National Park has a sizable black bear population. Clumsy looking on land, the black bear is actually a graceful swimmer. Throughout North America, black bears are found in a variety of color phases from white to brown to black. Olympic black bears are the exception. They are always black. In the lengthening days of early summer, a short dip in a cool alpine lake 
can be a refreshing change of pace. New life is awakening across the alpine landscape. Olympic elk move to higher elevations in summer, sharing the mountain meadows with Sitka black-tailed deer. The complex Olympic ecosystem is perfect for these small members of the mule deer family. They require both the winter shelter of the old growth forest and the summer grazing of the open high country meadows. One of the few species of Olympic mammals to survive the era of glacial isolation is the Olympic chipmunk. It evolved into one of the largest of the western chipmunks and the darkest in color. Another Ice Age survivor is the Olympic marmot, found only in the mountains of the Olympic Peninsula. The highly social marmots congregate in family units that might include adults, yearling offspring, and a litter of newborns. Always alert to danger, marmots are quick to dash for cover when a sentry sounds its shrill alarm. The most famous of the 60 glaciers found in Olympic National Park is the Blue Glacier, high on the slopes of Mount Olympus. The precipitous cliffs and windswept ridges are currently home for the mountain goat, a 20th century phenomenon in the park. A dozen were introduced in the 1920s, and now hundreds roam the high country. Out of the summer glacier fields, small rivulets constantly flow downward. They merge to form rushing streams. Tumbling waters cut through four life zones on their relentless journey to the sea. Ocean water rises again and is transformed into moisture-rich clouds that will replenish the peninsula and complete the cycle of life in the Olympics. Throughout the summer, bull elk grow new sets of antlers. By fall, mature males boast racks that weigh 30 pounds or more. The protective layer of velvet 
which covers their new growth, is rubbed off to expose the smooth, bony antler underneath. Elk and deer migrate down from timberline as summer gives way to autumn. Buck deer and bull elk alike sense the significance of the season. Restless bulls become more aggressive as each gathers up a harem of cows. Olympic National Park has the largest herd of Roosevelt elk found anywhere. As many as 5,000 of these animals live within park boundaries. Darker in color and slightly larger than their Rocky Mountain relatives, Olympic elk can weigh 1,000 pounds or more. When they congregate in groups for the fall rut, the sights and sounds are unforgettable. Haunting, high-pitched bugling reflects the bull's emotional intensity. Displays of dominance underscore his desire to keep his harem of cows intact. Females are shadowed by the younger bulls, but normally mate only with the dominant male. The crisp fall air matches the tension that surges through the herd. When a challenger appears on a nearby ridge, the stage is set for battle.
Bull elk expend an enormous amount of energy during the rut, taking little or no time to eat or rest. The dominant bull further depletes his strength by mating with every cow in his harem, making him particularly vulnerable. His chances of surviving a harsh winter are slim. But as long as there are elk calves in the spring, he will never really die. A new generation will take his place and ensure that majestic elk will forever roam the wilderness forests and high mountain meadows of Olympic National Park. There's no better place to see how weather molds our world than in Olympic, with its extremes of climate and life zones. Fallen trees decay almost visibly, and glaciers continue to carve the jagged mountains. It's also a great place to see how nature works, and there's no better way to feel a part of the environment than by taking an Olympic odyssey. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.